What's up, everybody? Carolina Jackpot coming at you. It is week number 16 of the college football season. Wow, it just seems like it was week one yesterday. Man, well, week 16 also is known as week number one of the bowl season. And we got five games on the slate for this week. They're all going to be played on Saturday. So nice and concise. I mean, nice, uh, Day of uh, some good football action there. Of course, not, not all the teams in these, you know, not the not the ones on the on the top of the marquee for most folks. You know, not the ones at the at the top of the polls. But uh, these bowls are important for these particular schools for recruiting and uh, for getting them a little bit of exposure out there. So let's delve on into it and uh, look at the lines, the teams, the players and uh, make a prediction on what's gonna happen on this Saturday. We got Tulane, the Green Wave, taking on UL Lafayette. Tulane come in with a record of six and six. UL Lafayette, seven and six. They lost a conference championship game uh, of the uh, Sun Belt a couple weeks ago to Appalachian State, which was basically a home game for App State because it was on their home field. Uh, Cure Bowl is played in Orlando, Florida. Uh, Tulane, uh, two quarterbacks this year. Justin McMillan is the one that's taken over for uh, Jonathan Banks. Uh, McMillan, 14 TDs, five uh, interceptions. Um, or maybe that's their stat together. I'm not quite sure. Got uh, Darius Bradwell's running back for Tulane. He's rushed for just under 1,000 yards on the season. Now, they're 6-6. Six and six, uh, Their best win uh, was a game against Memphis late in September. Uh, beat Memphis by about 20 points. Of course, Memphis played for the uh, American Athletic Conference Championship against UCF. Uh, in that game, Tulane was able to hold Daryl Henderson to 51 yards. That's the uh, uh, big running back for Memphis that's uh, done so well this year. Um, they were able to hold Navy to 117 yards rushing in their final uh, regular season game, and uh, a game in which they won. Um, Tulane, uh, you know, kind of had a few few uh, ups and downs there in the middle of the year. UL Lafayette prefers to do it on the ground. They've got 3,000 yards rushing this year. Uh, they split between uh, several running backs, most notably Trey Rajas and Elijah Mitchell. And their quarterback, Andre Nunez, has thrown 19 touchdowns, uh, but also 12 interceptions to go with it. Um, They're not scared to play uh, big teams. they got a couple of SEC teams uh, on the slate this year that they played, uh, games that really weren't competitive, but uh, ones that surely got them ready for this test. Uh, as far as a conference schedule, Tulane, of course, uh, you know, with a stronger conference schedule than uh, what UL Lafayette plays in the Sun Belt, but UL Lafayette outside the conference, you'd have to give it to them to nod with the uh, with the non-con. Uh, overall, I think Tulane here is just a more balanced team. Um, they're three and a half point favorites. I'm gonna take them to cover the spread here. Uh, I just think that uh, they're going to cover uh, just based off the fact that they're gonna be able to stop the run game of UL Lafayette. Uh, but still should be a should be a decent matchup there. Uh, North Texas, the Eagles or Mean Green, whichever you prefer. They have several different nicknames. Uh, versus Utah State uh, in the New Mexico Bowl. Uh, Utah State is laying eight in that game, which will be played at Dream Style Stadium, home of the New Mexico Lobos. New Me or North Texas coming on a record of nine and three. Um, Utah State uh, is uh, they are. Uh, they're a two-loss team. They lost to, uh, yeah, they're 10-2. Their losses came to Michigan State in the first game of the season uh, by a touchdown on that f first uh, on a Friday night game at the beginning of the year and uh, to Boise State close to the end of the season. So they really sandwiched a lot of wins in between those games. Uh, six times this year, uh, North Te or, uh, Utah State has scored 50 points or more in a game. So uh, really high octane offense there. That will put some points on the board. North Texas comes on the record of nine and three. Their losses came to uh, Louisiana Tech, um, UAB, which of course ended up winning the uh, Conference USA Championship and Old Dominion. 
which is kind of unexplainable. Old Dominion, uh, terrible team, uh, finishing with a record of four and eight, uh, save, uh, you know, they had that win over Virginia Tech. It was uh, just a crazy, crazy thing, but uh, still four and eight, with, uh, not a good season for them. Um, they had some good wins, uh, most notably the win on the road at Arkansas. Uh, say what you want, Arkansas was definitely the worst team in the SEC this year, <clears throat> but uh, still a uh, beating a power five school such as that on the road is some of an accomplishment for a uh, Conference USA team and uh, the season opener uh, against SMU. Uh, SMU ended up being a pretty decent team, and uh, they beat them pretty handily. The uh, thing that do concerns me, look at North Texas and their records, uh, UTSA, T San Antonio, a team that finished uh, like 3-9, and nine, and then UTEP, a team that finished 1-11. and 11. Uh, They only beat both those teams by three. It was 24-21 in uh, both games there. That's, that's kind of, kind of uh, unexplainable. Um, but North Texas uh, comes in, Mason Fine, threw for 3,700 yards this year, 27 TDs. Five interceptions, uh, DeAndre Torrey is the one who do it on the ground for them, 14 touchdowns and 950 yards. Of course, we already talked about Utah State and their 10-2 record. Uh, they just blew out a lot of teams you know, the, from that Mountain West Conference over there, the New Mexicos, uh, they beat up on New Mexico State, uh, San Jose State, you know, several other teams. Jordan Love is their quarterback, 3,200 yards, 28 TDs and five interceptions, so some pretty comparable numbers there between the two quarterbacks. Uh, 951 yards for their running back, Darwin Thompson, and 14 TDs. So looking at that, these teams are pretty evenly matched. And uh, I think North Texas might be a little bit undervalued here. Uh, however, just those close wins against the inferior teams, and that just kind of scares me a little bit with them. Uh, Utah State would pretty much know who they are. Really good team. Ah, it's eight points. It's moved up to actually eight and a half now. I'm going to take North Texas to cover the spread. Um, I do think Utah State probably gets this win, but I think that's going to be I think that's going to be a sneaky good game. Probably one of the better ones uh, out of the five. You got Arizona State versus Fresno State. Fresno State laying four in the Las Vegas Bowl to be played at Sam Boyd Stadium uh, in Las Vegas. And uh, Arizona State, we all know about, finished up 6-6 six and six under first-year coach Herm Edwards. Uh, of course, Fresno, uh, the champions of the Mountain West Conference with an 11-2 record. Fresno State, very impressive in that uh, Mountain West Championship. Uh, being able to beat Boise State on the blue turf in that last game of the season. That was, uh, that was a really good win for them. Arizona State, that six and six record. They come in, they actually won four of their last five games. Uh, and then they had a narrow loss at Oregon and they're uh, sandwiched around uh, all those. So if you want to look at that, it could have very easily been five out of their last five games, could have been wins. Uh, they had a win over Michigan State right there at the beginning of the year. Uh, I think they were actually ranked uh, for a short period of time. Manny Wilkins, their quarterback, uh, 19 touchdowns on the year and four interceptions. Of course, uh, he's going to be missing his uh, his Mr. Uh, Nikhil Harry, uh, his main target on the year who uh, caught nine touchdown passes. He's going to sit this one out, get ready for the NFL draft. It's, uh, so many people... Uh, are doing this year. They still have Eno Benjamin, 15 touchdowns on the ground at 1,500 yards plus. Still dangerous there. They'll be able to move the ball. Uh, Fresno, uh, really good defensive team. Uh, you don't uh, don't really think about them when you think about defense. They held their opponents to uh, single digits this year four times. Uh, and wins, and they're, they'll put it in the air of quarterbacks. Marcus Marion, 25 TDs, only three interceptions on the year. Some excellent numbers there. And uh, he likes to throw it to Keyshawn Johnson. Get eight touchdowns on the year, 1,300 yards. Receiving on that one, uh, you know, just looking at this one, you know, with those kind of numbers, I got to kind of go with Fresno State here 
cover in this one. I don't think they're going to blow Arizona State out, but I think they're just the better team right now. Um, he, you know, the, the, the win over Boise kind of solidified that for me. I'm going to go ahead and go with them there, but I wouldn't be surprised to see Arizona State pull an upset. That wouldn't be a huge shocker, um, but I still would go with the Bulldogs there if I were playing it smart. All right, we got Georgia Southern uh, versus uh, Eastern Michigan um, in the, let's see, what is this one called? The Camellia Bowl. The Camellia Bowl. This one's going to be played at the Crampton Bowl <laughs> Stadium. <laughs> Sounds really inviting. In uh, Montgomery, Alabama. I've never heard of it. I don't know who plays there. I don't think any college team plays in Montgomery, Alabama. Uh, Georgia Southern is laying one right now. This game was a pick em earlier on in the week. Well, let's take a look at it now. It's moved uh, with one point shifted toward Georgia Southern, who uh, finished with a record of 9-3 and three on the season. Of course, they got a big one. They won over Appalachian State. Um, so uh, there's that. Eastern Michigan finished up seven and five on the year. Um, if you in the middle of uh, Eastern Michigan's uh, schedule, they lost uh, some really close games against some pretty good teams like NIU. Um, they dropped one. They're, they've dropped games to Buffalo. Dropped games to Army. Uh, you know some pretty decent teams there. Uh, they were able in week number two to get a 2019 win uh, against Purdue. So uh, I guess that makes uh, Eastern Michigan better than Ohio State, right? Yeah, if you were comparing them. <laughs> but they did. They won. They beat Purdue 2019. So that would probably be Eastern Michigan's best win of the season if you wanted to look at it that way. Uh they do have trouble against teams that run the football. Uh, if you want to look at that, um, Army, of course, rushed the ball against them pretty well. And uh, even several of their losses, they still gave up uh, a lot of yards against the run. Georgia Southern, of course, has rushed for 3,130 uh, yards this year. Uh, their quarterback, Shea Wirtz, uh, 829 yards rushing. Of course, only 954 yards passing. For him, they run the option offense, so you're not going to light it up. Uh, as far as passing goes, he has thrown 10 touchdown passes, though, with zero interceptions. That's a pretty good stat. Uh, he, he, you know, coming from an option style quarterback and uh, still with just zero interceptions against 10 TD, still pretty good ratio there. Um, Wesley Fields, 959 yards, uh, rushing on the ground. Also for them, I, I got to look at this, just comparing it all up. Uh, I'm going to give uh, Georgia Southern the win here, and I'll pick them to take that and cover that one point. Um, just based off Eastern Michigan kind of struggling with Army a good bit, that was their worst loss of the year uh, point-wise. It's about, about 15 points. Most of their other games are just very close, so I'm going to have to take them there. Uh, they run a similar style. Uh, of offense, and I think they get it done. Georgia Southern is 1-0 in bowls. They've only played one time. It's in 2015-8. They won a bowl game against Bowling Green. And Eastern Michigan, 1-1 uh, one one in bowls. They went to one in 2016. And before that, the last time they went to a bowl was like 1987. So uh, these teams uh, will make the most of this opportunity. Uh, Middle Tennessee. Blue Raiders taking on App State. This is the uh, final bowl game uh, of the day. This will be the New Orleans Bowl coming from the Mercedes-Benz Superdome. Milton Tennessee coming in with a record of 8-5. and five. Uh, The App State Mountaineers 10-2. Uh, and two. Uh, They won their conference championship game. No, yes, 10-2, sorry. Uh, won their conference championship game against UL Lafayette a few weeks ago. Uh, Middle Tennessee... Looking at them, um, their defensive numbers, it looks like they've given up a lot more yards uh, than App State has uh, defensively. But that's kind of skewed a little bit. They had some lot plays. Uh, Vandy, uh, which they lost to 35-7. And then Georgia, I believe that was a 49-7 loss to them. So uh, Middle Tennessee has played a tougher schedule than what App State has, uh, especially in the non-conference there. Of course, Appalachian State's won their non-conference games uh, 
got rained out, Hurricane Florence. They didn't play that one uh, against Southern Miss. So they canceled that game. It was a home game for Appalachian State, uh, a game that wasn't made up because App State ended up in the conference championship. Um, Middle Tennessee lost the Conference USA Championship game to uh, UAB, which a team in which they had beat the week before. Um, Zach Thomas, quarterback for App State, 18 TDs, four uh, interceptions on the year. Uh, Darrington Evans, 1,100 yards on the ground, seven touchdowns. Uh, it's a pretty balanced team there. Middle Tennessee is a team that's going to put it in the air a lot. Brent Stockstill, <coughs> senior quarterback, seems like he's been there for 100 years. 28 TDs, only eight interceptions, uh, 3,200 yards. Uh, with a team that, that puts the ball in the air that much, uh, it's really not that bad. Um, you still, though, I still think Appalachian State's defense is better, even though those those numbers are a little bit skewed. They got an interim coach that will be uh, taking the reins for them, uh, Mark Ivey. Uh, another former App State player from back in the uh, early 1990s who will be leading them against Middle Tennessee. Of course, their coach, Scott Satterfield, left and took the uh, took the job at Louisville a couple weeks ago. So uh, he built quite a program there at App State. He's been, been there for a while. I would have figured that someone else would have snatched that guy up before now. But uh, I guess it was meant to be for him to be at Louisville. So that's where he's going to be at. And I uh, wish him well there. And Mark Ivey taking the reins for him in this bowl game. Uh, just look at Middle Tennessee all year long. I mean, they have played some close games. And uh, their schedule, I just think, has been a little bit tougher. Uh, I did forget to mention, though, App State did play uh, Penn State the first game of the season, which they dropped in overtime. Uh, that was a very, very strange uh, turn of events there. I still think Middle Tennessee is going to cover in this one. Seven points. Uh, App State, I think, will probably win it. I think this is going to be another good one, too. I think this one and I think the North Texas one are going to be your two best games of uh, the day, Saturday. And then all the rest of them will fall in somewhere in between. I forgot to mention here, UL Lafayette is actually 4-1 uh, and one in uh, bowl games. And uh, guess what? The only game that they have ever been in is uh, the Louis, uh, the New Orleans Bowl. That's the only bowl they've ever been. This will be the first time uh, playing a game outside uh, of New Orleans in the postseason. So uh, good luck with that one. I think Tulane will get this one done here in the Cure Bowl. All right, guys, that's my picks and predictions for week number 16. The first five matchups of the bowling season. Let me know what you think in the comment section below. If you like the video, hit her with a thumbs up. If you didn't like it, hit it with a thumbs down. It really doesn't matter to me. As I always say, your reaction means there was an interaction. I'll see you guys later on, and uh, I'll see you at the games. Appreciate it. Go Gamecocks, and go Coach Boom. Ah, ah, ah.